Hey, good morning. My name is John Pope, and I'm going to be relaunching my YouTube channel. And within that YouTube channel, I'm going to be doing movie reviews, and I'm also going to um, be providing uh, Bible devotionals, uh, things that uh, when I read them from the Bible, I will uh, kind of lift out, uh, reflect upon, and kind of give you my uh, perspective on how I'm, I'm seeing some things. Uh, a little bit more about my background. I was uh, born in Fairbanks, Alaska in 1972. I hate to admit that because I don't feel my age, um, but I'm seeing the gray hairs come through. And uh, my mom died six years ago, and she died at 71 years of age, and she didn't have a gray hair on her. So I'm like, man, why couldn't have I had the, why couldn't have I had that hair? But um, so born in Fairbanks, Alaska, and uh, grew up in Pueblo, Colorado from age 8 to 18, uh, went to college at Southern Nazarene University in Oklahoma City uh, from age 18 to 22, did a Bachelor of Arts in Religion with a minor in History, and then I did a Master of Arts degree in uh, Theology at Southern Nazarene University as well, and uh, have been living in, Can moved from Oklahoma City to Kansas City where I've been living ever since, 20, 22 years, which is kind of a shock. Uh, came here to go to Nazarene Theological Seminary, and uh, after seminary was over, I had always thought I'd go back to Colorado, and uh, I figured, you know, I, I grew up in Colorado. Colorado is the greatest place to live on earth, and I still kind of believe that, although it's changed so much since I since I lived there, um, but I, I ended up staying here. My last semester of seminary, I needed to do an out-of-parish ministry experience, and I had a I had a significant phobia of hospitals at the time. So I, I did an internship here at, um, at a local hospital and then enrolled in clinical pastoral education, which um, for those of you who have taken it, it's a, it's a life-transforming process. Um, we often talk about community in the church, um, but I will say I've never been a part of a community more intimate than that one. And it's, it's been hard to, to replicate ever since. And, and from that time on, I uh, went on a journey of soul-seeking, soul-searching, healing. And uh, those of it, you who have done CPE know what I'm talking about. Um, and the more you learn and discover about yourself, the more that you grow. And, and I won't deny from there, it's been a, a, a rocky journey. Um, my desires for what I thought I would be doing have not exactly aligned with what I am doing. Um, I've been a hospice chaplain for the last nine months and I've enjoyed it thoroughly. Um, and also with that, my desire to integrate theology and life, behavioral health, um, with an interest in doing advanced clinical pastoral education at some point, um, it, it still, still resonates with me. It's something I would still like to do. So. Um, with that, I'll, I'll be sharing more from time to time. Um, I think while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and, incidentally, I'm going to do two movie reviews after this. And the reason I, you know, I started a YouTube channel a few years ago where I was doing movie reviews, and I just kind of felt like everybody and their mother is doing a uh, uh, doing a channel and it's like why should I add on to to more traffic? Why am I doing a YouTube channel? And yeah, sure we everybody wants to have followers and subscribers and that kind of thing um, At the time if you go to my if you're if you're watching this to see some of the other ones I, I like to I review blockbuster movies But I also like those movies that nobody else is seeing or hasn't seen for a long time um, so I, I as one who's often felt like an outsider and outcast um, I like to do those movies, uh, read scriptures that most people aren't looking at or thinking about. Um, so after this video, I'm going to do one on Black Widow, which I saw. And I also saw A, a Quiet Place 2, which was amazing. Um, but, but the scripture text today, if I can find it, um, and, and I volunteer at our local rescue mission, I'll be, doing, I'll be sharing this text tomorrow. I'm going to read this here real quick. This is from Mark chapter 2, verses 18 through 
18 through 22. It's a nice thing about being on YouTube. You can just be your authentic self, and if it goes great, great. If not, that's fine too. Um, so this is Mark chapter 2, verses 18 through 22. Now John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting. And people came and said to him, Why do John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus said to them, The wedding guests cannot fast while the bridegroom is with them, can, can they? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast on that day. No one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old cloak. Otherwise, the patch pulls away from it, the new from the old, and a worse tear is made. And no one puts into new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins, and the wine is lost. And so are the skins, but one puts new wine into fresh wineskins. Amen. The word of the Lord. So when, when I saw the, the patches here, sewing one patch onto a, a cloth. I, I went back automatically to, to my childhood. So every school year we got new jeans. And those jeans lasted about, so school starts in September. My jeans probably lasted until October when I, when I started uh, running around playing, getting holes in them. And uh, yeah, I would get jeans, new jeans periodically and I wasn't that rough on them, but um, after after a few months of wearing them, they started to wear down. And uh, whether that be uh, from getting on our bicycles, jumping wraps, crashing, and I don't want to mislead you, I wasn't the biggest daredevil in the world, as some who may be seeing this can attest to. I was kind of a chicken. Um, but uh, those jeans, especially in the knees, would begin to wear out. And uh, instead of buying new jeans all the time, um, it was common just to put a patch on them. Uh, I don't remember if you sewed it on there or if you put the iron to it, uh, but yeah, you patch the hole. And, and even after the, the hole was patched, it would begin to kind of wear off, wear down, and you'd have to get another patch on it. And as you know, the more patches you put on something, the more they wear down. And especially in this world where these patches were made from sheep skin, it's impossible. You're going to, you patch on, patch off, wax on, wax off, right? Um, as I pick my nose here on this, the camera, that's okay. It's mine, right? So um, as I reflect upon patches in life, I, I can reflect upon the patches I put on in my own life where I thought I was healing and curing something when I was just putting a patch on it. Even becoming a Christian, I think, as important as that is, as, you, as, as important as it is to yield to Christ, I think at times, too, we can use that as a patchwork. And, and let me explain there. So I became a Christian at a Billy Graham crusade in Denver way back in 97. And it was, it was, it was forever life-changing. It was transformational. I was blessed to have a very powerful community in, in Pueblo where I grew up. And uh, there was a lot of changes that happened. Um, it was in the middle of the, the hair bands, heavy metal, and so I, I got rid of all my heavy metal tapes. Uh, the Iron Maiden Motley Crue shirts I used to have, I, I didn't wear those anymore. And I don't want to miss the Legion. I wasn't too wild. I was, I was, I was actually pretty boring. But I felt, I felt communion. I felt content. I felt... Um, I felt like I had community that I, that I was wanting. Uh, but over time, that community showed me my limitations as well. I was practicing all the right things, and especially when you go to Billy Graham, you get the Decision Magazine. So I got the Decision Magazine. I, I prayed every morning. I read the Bible every morning. I went to, to Wednesday Night Youth Group. I did all those things. And finally, when I went to college, there was a time, unfortunately, where I couldn't pay my college bill, and so my my uh, dinner account was frozen. And so I got to be introduced to the world of fasting, 
which wasn't fun going without a meal it's hard it's difficult it's challenging um but but entering into the world of fasting i i can appreciate a little bit of what mark is is referencing here too when he he lifts up the people who are watching um john's disciples on one side and the pharisees on the other side and very much like john's disciples um it's it's suggested that john's john sort of has an aesthetic um john's disciples have sort of an aesthetic christian practice where they see the repentance of the kingdom of god as coming it is is re, repentance and transformation is important but the kingdom of god is kind of still out out there someplace coming in so prayers um living in community fasting are, are big parts of that um pharisees um wanting to remain clean pure separate from the roman uh empire that's uh, dominated and occupying them during that that time period and, and in many ways uh, the day of atonement uh of, of grieving were were when uh israel was uh occupied um during old testament times by the ba by babylonians or Assyrians. um also you have the same sense of occupation during the, during the roman times too so there's a lot to be saddened about. And while John's disciples and the Pharisees have some different opinions on some things, the one thing they can say is that during this Roman occupation, hey, things are not what they, they should be. And yeah, fasting is probably a good thing to be doing. But but then these people are seeing uh, Jesus' disciples and saying, why aren't they fasting as well? And Jesus gives the most bizarre answer. How can you fast when the bridegroom is still here, is with us? Um, and so you put a wedding imagery, which in that time was a massive deal. Our weddings last, the, the service lasts about 20 minutes, and then the, the reception goes for a couple hours. In the ancient world, uh, a wedding would go for, for days. Um, if you've ever seen Lord of the Rings, uh, the beginning celebration there um when they're in hobbitville i forgot the name of the town man and i just cut out but i think we're i think we're back now so if you go back to the hobbit lord of the rings uh, the, the celebration that's taking place there uh similar to that with with weddings in the ancient world and and so with all that being said jesus is saying to his disciples to those who are watching yes What's going on around here with Roman occupation, with, with frustration, desolation, um, there are definitely things that need to be fasted for. However, I'm showing my disciples that there is something beyond fasting, something beyond just putting a patch on the challenges that are around us. I want you to come closer to me because I am doing something completely new. I'm going to show you how to celebrate when life is challenging, when things are difficult, um, in spite of circumstances. I want you to come to me. And it's not just anybody he's asking to come to him. He's asking those that that world, that time, that society might shun. Uh, Peter, a fisherman, uh, James and John, um, leaving their father behind, uh, leaving their inheritance and coming to follow Christ, Levi, the tax collector. These are the types of people that he is inviting into his wedding, to his celebration, to say, hey, be my disciples, and I will show you something that will change your patch into a whole new wardrobe. I know I'm right.